Hello everyone, I'm Xie Lei. Thank you very much for having me here. I would like to warmly thank the Immaculate Committee for the organization of this lecture. You and I live in the world of images. In this incessant, rapid and planetary circulation of images, I have selected some of which I don't use to create new images, but as a stimulus for making paintings. Paintings are far away from images which have served as a starting point, as well as being distant from the literal definition of an image. From the French dictionary Le Robert, I quote, the exact or analog reproduction of a being of a thing. My lecture will revolve around my practice, its essential link with the images, the protocol that I established for their selection for their treatment, their reconstruction, and their erasure. The particularity of an image may appeal to me, but I quickly forget it to attach myself to the universal that it can evoke. However, do I have the right to be interested in all images to use those which are external to my native culture? I will ask this question at the end of uh, my talk. Since some people, and artists in particular, want to restrict the circulation of images to their community alone, since this community would be so holder, exclusive of a legitimate identity to understand these images and their handling. Out of conviction, I chose painting. Its richness and vast possibilities opened the way for language translating my sensitive universe by experiencing a vocabulary that is both figurative and abstract. Painting is an adventure for me. I seek to practice it in such a way to deal with the subjects that question our world, our societies. Using the medium rich in such a long history also challenges me in contemporary times. In the digital age, with instant and globalized communication via the internet and social media, I believe that painting stands out by offering another perception of time. It can be beneficial to slow the gaze, to escape the intoxication of acceleration and immediacy. It may be paradoxical to say this today, while we are in a video conference, when health barriers requires us to use the internet more. So we are very fortunate that it exists. But the transient state does not change my mind and position, as I do not practice painting as a resistance to this current era in the digital age. On the contrary, I want to combine it with this time to show even more clearly its singularity. Thus, the quasi ghostly appearance of the subject through the painting has always intrigued me. Like the light that manages to pass through the painting, giving a filmic sensation or electric effect. I regard this effect as an analogy of a digital image that emerges from the screen. Many of my paintings refer to the anxiety that everyone might feel about the justification of their existence, the quest for identity, the awareness to their vulnerability. The violence of the world in which we live leads me to paintings which deal with fear, desire, horror, to images of a insatiable human madness, dialectical between an agonizing reality and an imagination which is just as much so. These existential questions are asked through my native culture, which led me to consider interactions and tensions in order to overcome dualism. As an extension of Taoism, my research led me in the West to the French expression entre chien et between dog and wolf if we translate it literally in English. That time of the day when the decline of light prevents us 
to distinguish the protective dog from the threatening wolf. Where the security faces danger, the known is measured by the unknown. Evidence fades. Doubt, confusion of images and meaning settle. The Latin interganem et lupum, which has no equivalent in Chinese, has become mine, opening the way from reality to metaphor, to allegories, leading me to poetics of strangeness. In the flow of images, I select one which will act as a stimulus. It can be an ordinary image of banality, diffused but whose diffusion does not alter the subject, whose circulation is without consequence on the latter. It can also be photographs that I took myself, private images that did not circulate at the time. My selection can also retain images whose strength is intrinsic to their circulation, images that, if I can say, everyone has seen, images which will nevertheless generate paintings, erasing this circulation. After the choice, a process of a reflection begins where the image is deconstructed, then reconstructed, where a composition is put in place. Painting offers me the means of a language, allow me to explore the polysemy of the chosen image. Ultimately, the painting is far from the chosen image. As examples of these uh, two categories of images that I have just mentioned, I will now present a selection of nine paintings made in the last ten years. I will not comment on these paintings, but only show how the initial image and its circulation intervened differently. For some paintings, I will also show you the source images. So, for Blow, which comes from an image found by chance, completely banal, probably in a first aid manual, a standard image of Mot d'Emploi. But the mouth-to-mouth -mouth saving was for me the reminiscence of a legend told in China to children to frighten them. Never sleep with your mouth open. A ghost will come to suck your soul. The viewer does not need to know either first aid or the Chinese legend. For each of the following two paintings, there is no one single image that would have been the direct source. In these two cases, it is rather a crystallization of several images repeated by my memories of an image memory in a way a mental image. Expose does not come from a direct image either, for instance a self-immolation by fire, but relates to images that my memory has preserved or constructed from shamanism, voodoo. Exchange the stratification of images, those of a Roman status, memorized for this diptych. Because my life always leads me to interrogate the issue of identity, the appearance of identity. For conceal, its source image comes from a photo I took of a friend of mine, who is French and has lived in China for decades. A private image, private here, in its um, double sense. An ordinary portrait, a normal face. I finished this painting just before the lockdown in Paris, but after the COVID-19 alert had been given in China. Unlike these four previous paintings, the thriver was aroused by an image I found in a newspaper that went around the world and was relayed by social networks. It is that of a footballer Masut Otto, praying during every match, the spot displayed by the German international footballer of Turkish origin to President Erdogan, who is a candidate for his re-election, has heightened the controversy and the weight of the image. As a set of four paintings progressed in my studio, the background of this image faded away and finally stopped bothering me. The ambiguous gesture and the moment of prayer 
prevailed over the direct impact of an image and its temporality. Does the viewer need to know the challenge of this temporality? Challenge. Likewise, images of migrants and their journeys by boat to Europe have swept the planet from 2015. But who had never before seen the image of a boat overloaded with passengers fleeing poverty? For me, it's a tragedy that spans centuries. I wanted to detach myself from the breaking news. Make a line. I was still living in Beijing and was marked by the trauma of a sauce in 2003, when the image of the Fukushima disaster appeared eight years later and its repercussion of the daily life of the Japanese. I immediately thought back to SARS from my personal and private experience. Touching the shadow, more than 15,000 people bathed in this outdoor swimming pool in Sichuan province, an image which has also been worldwide circulated to highlight the crowd in China and as well as to show the happiness of summer, the reversal the possible tilting of life towards disaster, of joy towards anxiety, interesting me more. Before I wonder about my freedom to be able, as an artist, to use all the images that circulate, here is a last example, an example of barbarism that we thought was extinguished after the Inquisition. In 2015, Dash burns alive in a cage, a captured Jordanian pilot. These images were broadcast around the world. This is vanishing, a diptych from unbearable images. Sixty years earlier, images, also unbearable, of the body of the young Emmett Till, the starting point for demonstrated painting, Open Casket, produced in 2016, and which sparked a controversy over the circulation and appropriation of the images, of which I would like to talk now. The French philosopher Francis Wolff has written in his book, Plaidoyer pour l'universel, I quote, We all know we are exposed to the same risks, climate change, economic and ecological crisis, epidemics, terrorism, and so on. But it imposes itself on the consciousness the unity of a humanity receives in representations, identity claims, nationalism, xenophobia, religious radicals. End of quotation. The philosopher warns us of a contradiction. Human faces the same dangers, but instead of uniting, it is divided by the choices of its representations, by a desire to limit the circulation of images, to reserve their use to categories classified according to an exclusive identity based on race, religion, and gender. This paradox has led to many discussions and incidents in cultural lives in recent years in France and elsewhere. I will take the 2017 incident in New York at the Whitney Biennial as an example. At the opening, African-American artists demand the takedown and even destruction of this painting by Dana Schutz, Open Casket. They accuse its author, a white artist, of cultural appropriation, of having appropriated a part of the history of black Americans, of their suffering of having used a symbolic image of the movement in favor of the civil rights for commercial gain and personal glory when she does not belong to the black community and especially that, as a white woman, she represents the oppressors. In this way, as a Chinese artist, should I only be interested in Chinese images for, from Chinese culture? Let's be more precise. As you know, China is a vast country. I belong to the Han ethnic group. So should I refrain from taking a interest in the Tibetan, the Uyghur, the Mongol, 
the Manchu? What a withdrawal, what a cultural self-sufficiency imposed by those who set themselves up as owners, as legacy of images. Shouldn't an artist precisely take distance, a step back from the subject of their work and therefore get out of the prism of a community? As I said earlier, the particularity can intrigue me in the image, but it is universal that will hold me. As a human being, I consider that my identity is mixed, multiple, shifting. As an artist, I become even more part of the universal. Because also, I will quote Francis Wolff again. Your universal remains the only end of all struggles against inequality and domination. Let's go back to the open casket. The painting and its source, imagery. For this painting, Dana Schutz was inspired by an image that was historically widely circulated and became a nightmare of a fight. The photograph was showing the cruelty of racism in Mississippi in 1955, the torture and the murder of Emmett Till, a 14-year-old black teenager. During Emmett's funeral, his mother insisted that the coffin be left open to everyone so that we could see the barbarity. A jury of 12 men, all white, will acquit the murders white people too. Dana Schutz painted Open Casket after a violent summer in the United States in 2014, made by the deaths of African Americans killed by the white police officers. Huge protests that the current situation in this country recalls. Let's look at Open Casket. A small canvas that does not play on the spectacular, only 99 by 135 centimeters. Dana Schutz did not exactly reproduce the photograph, which had become historic. She did not use it literally, which would have been open to criticism. Her pictorial language is faithful to that which she usually handles. Where the faces are already unstructured, the strongly expressionist compositions, the bright colors, while the photographs of uh, Emmett Till were in black and white. For comparison, a large painting titled Michael Jackson's Autopsy was made in 2005, 11 years before Open Casket, or another one, self-portrait as a pachyderm of the artist. Some artists, for example, Parker Bright, criticized that Dana Schutz has nothing to say to the black community about black drama. Hannah Black said, it is not acceptable for a white person to transmute black suffering into profit and fun. Facing these attacks, Dana Schutz has to justify herself. I don't know what it is like to be black in America but I do know what it's like to be a mother. The painting was never and will never be for sale. My engagement with this image was through empathy with his mother. She adds this sentence also. I didn't know if I could do this painting ethically or emotionally. It's easy for artists to send the to censor themselves, to convince themselves and not to try anything before trying. Open Casket for me is a striking painting that in the end can only encourage the spectator to want to know more about its origin, to discover a racist murder that they might not have been aware of. Only seven years after the event, in 1962, the song, The Death of Emmett Till, was composed by Bob Dylan and also recorded by 
during that the following year. Two white musicians, who no one accused at the time of cultural appropriation. Thank you very much for your attention.